if you go to fucking Los Angeles, uh, everyone's a fucking big producer. Everyone is the biggest producer in all of fucking Hollywood, all right? If you, you, no matter where you go, you fucking sit down in a fucking restaurant, and you're sitting there eating your fucking burger, minding your own fucking business, discussing real fucking things. The people behind you are talking about fucking movies. They're talking about how they're a big producer. They're name dropping like a motherfucker. So then I said to Tom Cruise and Bruce Willis, you know, everyone is this big, they all, they're all talking this smarmy voice. They have their big fake smiles. They're all this, they, they all think they're number one producer in Hollywood. I swear if everyone that I've seen who, who thinks they're a producer is a producer, then, I mean, I don't know what the fuck they're producing. There's only so many fucking shows on television. There's only so many movies being made. Yet the entire, you know, yet there's a million producers in Los Angeles. Help me figure that one out. And, by the way, uh, if, you're not, if they're not a producer, they're a screenwriter. You always hear that shit, too. I'm working on my screenplay. Working on my screenplay. I'm a writer. Let me tell you something. If you are a screenwriter, you're not a fucking writer, all right? Now, that doesn't, that's, there's, there's of course exceptions to that rule. There are good screenplays out there that, are, that deserve to be, you know. But for the most part, screenwriting consists of uh, being fed plot points that were decided by a committee of uh, fat, middle-aged men uh, who are with, with, bad hair with bad hair pieces and fat asses sitting in an office deciding what the stupid American public will like and they pass you down your plot points and you fucking make it happen in the most cliche formulaic way possible alright if you've seen one of these fucking movies you've seen them all let's take romantic comedies for instance guy meets girl girl doesn't like him they fight comedically throughout the film then at the end it turns out that they really are in love and they get together, but then something happens. So the girl leaves. He almost gives up, but then he comes back in some romantic and gives her some romantic speech. And then they get back together and live happily ever after. Wow! How can you call yourself a writer for that? You know, you, you know, you know, you're just a fucking joke machine. All right, you know. Ooh, lighten this moment with another joke. Okay, let's open the joke book. I'm a writer. You're not a writer, dickface. You're a typist. That's all you do. You're just typing. You're not fucking writing. Writing consists of taking things from your fucking imagination and creating, uh, you know, plot twists and things of that nature. And anyone who watches TV or has been watching films recently can tell you, you ain't fucking writing. You ain't doing that. There's, no, there's nothing imaginative about what you do. Quit calling yourself writers. You're not. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there in the Kurosawa film the other day, and um, this guy was mentioned talking about Carrie, the movie Carrie, and this chick said, like, that, like you know, that Stephen King? Oh, you mean Stephen King's Carrie. And he's like, oh yeah, isn't that the guy that wrote the book? The, the guy that wrote the book, yeah, one of, one of the best-selling authors in America, not a great fucking writer, but he, he, you know, but because he writes books, it doesn't matter how much, how famous he is around the rest of the country, in Hollywood, he's just, he's just some guy, you know, Hollywood doesn't view books as books, it just views them as fodder for fucking screenplays. Ooh, what idea can we steal next? Ooh, let's put $200,000 in the pocket of this, uh, budding young author and to fucking uh, rape their work and put it on the big screen. Let's, uh, you know, and let's talk about these adaptations they make, man. If you, if you go watch any fucking movie, chances are, look, pay attention during the, the credits of any movie you go see that, um, <coughs> seems even halfway fucking original, and chances are it's going to say, based on the novel, based on the short story by whoever, and memorize that. And watch that piece of shit movie, because it's inevitably going to be a piece of shit, because it was written by non-writers and uh, plotted out by big fat corporate fuck faces. And then go home, look up that fucking writer, find the book or the short story that it was based upon, get that motherfucker and read it. 
okay? And after you've done that, compare and contrast the content of the book, the story in the fucking book, and what you saw on the big screen. You will inevitably come to the conclusion that the Hollywood adaptation is a fucking travesty and an abomination. It doesn't matter. You can take the best book, the worst book, any fucking book. It's always a fucking travesty when they fucking adapt it. Every fucking time they adapt it, it's always inferior, without fucking fail. The only, the only fucking time I've ever seen them get it right, the only time I've ever seen an adaptation that wasn't total fucking shit, is uh, when they adapted Fight Club, which is by Chuck Palahniuk, okay? And but that's only because the book is, is such a piece of shit, yeah, I said it, that... It doesn't really matter, and the movie was enjoyable. I enjoyed that movie because it didn't really have it didn't. There wasn't much they could fucking ruin. It wasn't like they were treading on sacred ground there. And and let's not, you know, I know a lot of people would be like, you know, they're gonna come up here with that Lord of the Rings shit. Those Lord of the Rings movies were fucking crap. Okay, they were fucking shit. Fuck, bunch of two little gay fucking midgets. Going to a volcano to destroy a piece of jewelry. Big fucking deal. You can tell that story in less than nine and a half fucking hours, alright? Jesus fucking Christ. I can't believe I fucking got suckered into seeing those movies, for fuck's sake. My brother, my, my fucking brother, went through a fucking Tolkien phase, and I had to sit through each of those movies more than fucking once. You have any idea what it's like to sit through a fucking Hobbit movie twice? You know, if the first time doesn't lull you into a fucking coma, the second time you're going to be sitting there, you know, you're just sitting there in the theater wait, w wishing you had a fucking gun to put your fucking head so you could blow your fucking brains out. You know? Or, better yet, you wish you could take, a, take the gun, get on a fucking plane, fly over to New Zealand, take a cab to Peter Jackson's fucking house, knock on his fucking door, put the gun to his fucking head, and blow his fucking brains out. I would do that if he had brains to blow out to begin with. By the way, what the fuck was with King Kong? You know, you ever seen the original King Kong? It's the same story as the King Kong he told, but they managed to tell it in like an hour and a half. It took him like three hours and twenty-something minutes to tell the same fucking story. Didn't add nothing to it. There was nothing in there that he fucking... There was nothing stupendous added to the fucking story. Nothing, nothing necessary. And yet, it, it's three and a fuck. It's three fucking hours long, you know. And you're sitting there, and there's nothing fucking dramatic about it. All right, you know. When I'm sitting there in the theater, I went to, went to the fucking theater to see this movie. And at the end of the movie, when they shoot King Kong off the fucking building, he falls off the building, right? And then they show the dramatic shot of him falling down. The whole theater erupts into fucking laughter. I mean, how are you supposed to not laugh at a giant fucking monkey falling to the ground? Did you think it was dramatic? Do you think, I mean, were they sitting there animating this? And then the giant monkey falls. And it's supposed to be dramatic, and they treat it all seriously. You know, like, it's not a fucking joke. In the original, they treated it fucking humorously. Everything was treated sardonically. And in this one, they try to make it out to be some fucking dramatic event. And of course it does it doesn't it's not so fucking dramatic event. It's a fucking giant monkey falling off of a goddamn building. What's not funny about that? And who the fuck told George Lucas he could direct? You know? Because he fucking ruined the Star Wars prequel trilogy. Totally fucking ruined it. Only I mean, you know, didn't he learn I mean, because I mean you know, the original Star Wars was a fucking fluke, okay? He got it right by some fucking lucky series of coincidences. Then he let someone else write and direct fucking Empire. And it turned out way fucking better. Best of the fucking trilogy. And then he got more involved in Jedi, and it wasn't as good. It was a fucking weaker fucking movie. Then he got completely fucking immersed in the fucking prequel trilogy, and it sucks fucking balls. All right, Jar Jar Binks is the most annoying fucking character in history. But you know, you look at all this shit, and this entire fucking month, January's always been the dumping month.